So we're at Chowla floodplain today and Chowla is one of the icon sites along the Murray-Darling Basin and it's an important floodplain ecosystem that has a diversity of different habitats that support a huge range of species including eight different frog species um, and Chowla is actually home to all eight species that are expected for this region. Frogs let us know if we are managing our wetlands correctly Frogs also tell us whether the ecosystem as a whole is functioning. So if we have frogs successfully breeding, that breeding event creates abundant food resources for other things. So those tadpoles are eaten by a range of bird species, turtles and fish. This year, the plan was to use our environmental regulator to mimic a flood and to use some of the water coming down the Murray to push out to those wetlands. But what actually happened was a unique natural flood event, which we're experiencing right now. A huge amount of water took over our mimicked event and we now have the unique opportunity to monitor what happens during a major flood event at Chowla. Frogs rely on water to complete their life cycle. So they're an excellent indicator of there being water within the time frame of a frog's lifespan. So a frequent watering event at least once every generation of frogs. And then to breed safely in the water, they need places like the lignum basins here at Lake Litra. So extensive inundated vegetation that provides some protection from predators. Then they need abundant food. So there's lots of insects, macroinvertebrates in the water from the flush of water that's come out onto the floodplain. Then they need conditions that aren't too saline. They need some dissolved oxygen in the water that dissolved oxygen can't be too low. And then they need the water to stick around for long enough for them to complete all of the developmental stages. So the tadpoles we're seeing, they need to grow all the way through from an egg to having the four legs and being able to hop out of the water to find a refuge when the water goes away again. Traditionally, frog monitoring is done by um, listening for their calls at wetlands. Frog calls tell us that frogs are here and attempting to breed but they don't actually tell us whether the frogs are successfully breeding and tadpoles are being produced. So to understand the response of frog breeding across the floodplain of Chowla, we've looked at several different large ephemeral lakes and wetlands across the floodplain. Um, so we've monitored at three different sites within those wetlands where we set out fike nets in habitat that's kind of ideal for frog breeding. So that might be in lignum basins where there's lots of good substrate for frogs to live around. We head out in the evening and set up three uh, fike nets and we leave them overnight to collect frogs, fish and tadpoles. We go out early in the morning, pull the nets in and we process everything that's in the nets. So we uh, count uh, abundances of each of the species as well as measure their lengths and their developmental stage for the tadpoles. And then we return everything back to the water, um, except for the invasive and introduced species. And then we move on to the next site and do the same process. So we're finding a lot of tadpoles today and a lot of different species of tadpoles. Mostly we have Perrin's tree frog tadpoles. 
Lake Litra seems to be a bit of a hot spot for Perrin's tree frogs to breed and we record them predominantly at Lake Litra actually at Chowla. We also have a lot of Limnodynastes species and that's uh, three different types of frogs, so spotted marsh frog, uh, long-thumbed frog and banjo frogs uh, and we're also finding our burrowing frog species so there's Sedell's burrowing frog and painted burrowing frog. So this is a southern bell frog tadpole so these are a threatened species and Chala is a hot spot for this species um, and we've recorded them breeding at several sites across Chala during this high flows and the flood um, and also during operations of our regulator um, and this one's in the later stages of development. Across the surveys that we've done so far, we've seen the tadpoles for most of the species come to the later stages of development, which is really encouraging and shows that multiple species are successfully recruiting into juvenile frogs. But we really hope to see what happens from here going forward um, with the extended flooding period, whether that might introduce new breeding events to occur and so we can answer some really key gaps in knowledge there. So this monitoring not only tells us whether frogs are breeding successfully but it tells us about the timing and duration of those breeding events um, and that allows us to um, manipulate the environmental water delivery to suit those frog breeding events. Um, so in years when we don't have a beautiful natural flood and abundant water we can use our environmental water to top up a wetland if we're recording during our monitoring that those frogs aren't quite through to the late developmental stages yet. We might put more water in via pumping or we might hold the water back using a regulating structure so that we can see them complete that breeding cycle.